Hey everybody, this is our little slice of CNET where we talk all about Apple. So let's start off with the big one, the Apple iPhone 14. There are a lot of reports out there. Touch ID, USB-C, what about those cameras? Is the notch going away? What's it gonna look like? This is the part of the video where I say none of the images you'll see are official and these reports have not been confirmed by Apple because that's not the way the world works. That being said, we've seen a lot of reports that turn out to be true. Leaks do happen. Let's start with the reports about the next iPhone making that notch smaller. We've gotten this tweet from Shrimp Apple Pro. Quote, here are the images of the CAD file and full measurements of iPhone 14 Pro Max that I obtained. Look at that, the notch is not a notch anymore. There's three holes in the screen. Two on the left are encapsulated by one pill-shaped bezel. The right has a circular bezel and a circular cutout. It kind of looks like a sideways lowercase letter I. The second image shows more of the new iPhone at a three quarters look. The overall design looks similar to the iPhone 13. The corners are still rounded and the sides are flat. The third image shows a side view and we get a look at the cameras. We can compare it to the iPhone 13 Pro's cameras. The overall design looks similar to the 13 Pro Max. And the fourth shows off a full body shot of the iPhone. Yep, looks like an iPhone. Another tweet from the same source included the dimensions. Shrimp Apple Pro says that the bezel around the iPhone 14 Pro Max will be just 1.95 millimeters. The iPhone 13 Pro Max has a 2.42 millimeter bezel. So that would mean you're getting even more screen. More recently, Ice Universe tweeted this out. They wrote, as can be seen from CAD, the bezel of iPhone 14 Pro is narrowed. When you take a look at them side by side, the difference looks noticeable. Then there's this tweet from Ice Universe. It may be the glass cover of the iPhone 14 series. We can find that both the Pro and Pro Max are whole designs, and if you look closely, the bezels are a bit narrower. Here we can see that lowercase i cutout on the Pros. The regular iPhones would stick to a notch. We also see that the iPhone 14 lineup could be getting a large non-Pro Max. We'll get back to that in a bit. Bloomberg's Mark Gurman also reported that Apple will move to pill plus circle cutouts on the Pro. He says that the lowercase i will be Apple's solution until it's able to fully embed Face ID and the front-facing camera into the display itself. Gurman also said that under-display tech is still three or four years away. While we're talking about a true all-screen iPhone, there are already rumors about when that is coming. Noted analyst Ming-Chi Kuo said that the under-display Face ID is coming in 2024. He says that this time schedule is less of a technical issue and more of a marketing purpose. Ross Young of Display Supply Chain Consultants also says the all-screen iPhone is coming to the iPhone 16. So there's your iPhone 16 preview. Let's go back to the iPhone 14. Let's talk about screen sizes. For that, we'll return to Mark Gurman's report at Bloomberg. He says stuff's gonna change with the 14. Let's put up some graphics so we don't get lost in the numbers. There would be four iPhones, the iPhone 14, the iPhone 14 Max, the iPhone 14 Pro, and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. The 14 and 14 Pro would have a 6.1 inch display. The Max models would have 6.7 inch displays. Yep, you heard that right. With the iPhone 14 lineup, German says there would be a large iPhone that's not a Pro. That tracks with that glass cover image that Ice Universe showed off. What happens to the iPhone mini? German says the mini doesn't sell well enough to even keep around. Wow. Let's talk cameras. Here's what Ming-Chi Kuo said. The front camera of four new iPhone 14 models in the second half of 2022 would likely upgrade to autofocus in about f1.9 aperture versus iPhone 13's fixed focus and f2.2. He says that will provide a better shallow depth of field effect. Mark Gurman says that the iPhone 14 Pro will get a new 48 megapixel sensor for the wide angle camera. The regular iPhone 14 would have a 12 megapixel camera like the 13. Way back in December of 2021, Ming-Chi Kuo said that Apple would be bringing a 48 megapixel rear camera to the iPhone 14 and it would be limited to the Pro models. This new camera would also allow for 8K video recording. Oh, that improved camera on the Pro could mean that the camera bump is even bigger. We've got this tweet by Ming-Chi Kuo to add more context. The main reason for the larger and more prominent rear camera bump of the 14 Pro slash Pro Max is upgrading the wide camera to 48 megapixels versus 13 Pro slash Pro Max's 12 megapixels. Will Touch ID making a return in any way on the iPhone 14? 
Well, based on the leaks we've already looked at, Face ID should be in every iPhone 14. When Apple introduced Face ID, Phil Schiller talked about how secure it was by comparing it to Touch ID. The chance that a random person could unlock your phone using Touch ID was one in 50,000. So what are the similar statistics for Face ID? One in a million. Previous reports by Mark Grimman said that Apple did test an under-display Touch ID for the iPhone 13 that never came to fruition. Ming-Chi Kuo said Touch ID could appear on the iPhone 14, but updated his position. He says that under-display Touch ID could arrive as soon as 2023. However, the latest survey indicates new iPhones in 2023 and 2024 may not adopt under-display Touch ID. Face ID with a mask on iPhone is already a great biometrics solution. All that being said, it is possible that Apple could build a Touch ID sensor into the main side button like the iPad Air and the iPad Mini. This is not something I've seen reports on. It just seems relatively logical. So what's going on with the ports? There have been conflicting rumors out there about whether USB-C would arrive on the iPhone 14, if ever. Some reports say that Apple will go portless with MagSafe getting a bigger push. Apple is also facing off with the European Union as the EU has a proposal out there that would require USB-C to become the standard port for all smartphones, tablets, cameras, and more. This would reduce waste by letting people use their old chargers on new devices. That could mean the end of the lightning port, or maybe not. Back in 2010, the European Commission picked micro USB as the official standard. The EC required smartphones available in Europe to be compatible with the interface. Apple was able to get the OK for its 30-pin dock connector by offering a micro USB adapter. One source says Apple may stick with the lightning connector for the iPhone 14, but increase its speed. Right now, lightning runs at USB 2.0 speeds. An upgrade could help that. You may be thinking, that's all great to hear. How many of those sources are reliable? And I'm glad you're thinking critically. Mark Gurman at Bloomberg, Ice Universe, and Ming-Chi Kuo have excellent track records. That's why you heard their names so much. As for Shrimp Apple Pro, I'm not sure how reliable they are. However, considering the CAD drawings they had match up with Ice Universe's leaks, that's a good sign. The idea that the next iPhone Pro would move to the pill plus circle cutouts makes plenty of sense. Everyone who sees that phone in the real world will know that's the newest and bestest iPhone. It has to be. It doesn't have that notch anymore. This lowercase i design can become very useful in branding, just like the notch was. Apple has a tendency to make small changes like that so the general public can easily identify different iPhones when they're out in the real world. The rear camera setup was a very easy indicator. Everything up to the iPhone 8 had a single rear camera. The 8 Plus had two cameras and went with a horizontal layout. The 10 took that dual camera and turned it 90 degrees. The 11 had two cameras and a vertical layout, but with a box around them. The Pro model, three cameras. The iPhone 13, diagonal camera layout. The 13 also has a front notch that is not as wide as older iPhones. Once Apple figures out the under display face ID thing, I'd imagine we would see that first on the Pros. The regular iPhones would get the pill plus circle for a generation or two. Then it's gonna be all screen iPhones all the time at some point. Anytime anyone says Apple will improve the cameras on the next iPhone, that's just a given. Apple will tout the newest iPhone to be the one with the best camera we've ever put in a smartphone. It is the best camera ever in an iPhone. Apple's been hanging its hat on great cameras since the iPhone 4. With Apple's better systems on a chip, it can generate better images thanks to computational photography. Will Touch ID make a comeback on the main iPhones? You know, I think this is a toss-up. Apple has the technology for its iPads. Yes, Touch ID may be less secure than Face ID, but so are really weak passwords, and Apple lets you still have those. I figure Apple will bring Touch ID back to the main iPhone only if it works as well as it did in the past. An under-display model would also have to be held to that standard. And what about USB-C? I don't see why Apple would not be able to engineer a way to get a USB-C port into a phone. I mean, it's in lots and lots of other phones. Is Apple holding on to the lightning port so we can get some more money out of proprietary cables? Look, considering Apple is worth over $2.5 trillion, I'm not making up that number. I would imagine that Apple would be just fine without lightning on its phones. If USB-C is good enough for the MacBook and some iPads, how about the iPhone? I want to know what you want to see out of the next iPhone. Let me know in the comments. We might feature them on the show, assuming we can show them in public. You can tweet me. Let me know in person if you see me. I'm Aya Zaktar, and I'll see you online.